Uh, it's something Daniel Gafford says he never got to do. He's recapping his Razorback career in his own words and telling us how he wants to say goodbye to Razorback fans. Miami Beach, water sparkles, palm trees wave, boats cut across the ocean. In this seaside paradise, many come to find rest and relaxation. Uh, Daniel uh, Gafford comes uh, to prepare. The lone person along this strip of sandy shore, Gafford trains for the NBA, each stride carrying him closer to the next step in his career. More than 1,300 miles from Fayetteville, Gafford has the distance he needs to reflect on his Razorback career. I didn't regret it at all because, I mean, I came back for a reason. I came back to play at Arkansas for one more year and I came back to mature more and be ready for this process. And distance lends itself to perspective. I know it was a lot of things I could have done better at Arkansas. You gonna speed up the time like that? Looking back, yeah, I seen some stuff and dealing with the people from the program with the training and stuff, they showed me things I could have done better and things I could have actually done in certain times in those games that could have helped us out a lot. You're the team's leading scorer, leading rebounder. You honestly feel that you didn't do enough? I was, you know, the one guy that they looked to every time and I never came up sometimes for some games. It was like most of the games that we played were real big games. And most of those games, I didn't show up. Come on, Dan. Get him out. Get him out. Accepting this piece of his legacy is the maturity Gafford wanted to gain when he returned to Fayetteville following his freshman year. During the season, it used to, it used to dwell on me a lot. But as you know, I'm growing as a person, you tend to mature. You tend to just let that brush off your shoulder. The losses, though disappointing, are part of the game. There's something professionals, like the one Gafford will become, learn how to live with. But there's one thing that Daniel Gafford didn't get to do, to say goodbye on his own terms. Can you walk me through how you told Mike Anderson and how he took the news that you were leaving? He took it pretty hard. But I mean, as a coach, he basically let, you know, let me know his side of, you know, how he feels about it. But Gafford says they never discussed what happened next. Did he give you any indication that he was going to say that or did that catch you off guard? No, it caught me off guard. Yeah, I, was, I didn't even expect it to be like a press conference that day, to be honest, until um, Mike Haywood had told me. I feel like I could have had some more time to, you know, figure out how I wanted to tell everybody and, you know, build up to it. You know what I mean? It happened the way it did and you can't change it. I mean, I don't have any hard feelings. I mean, they got out there. It was either going to get out there with me or with them. I wanted it to be with me, but they put it out there first. And you have the opportunity now. What would you like to say to Razorback fans? No, I mean, thank you for the love and support that they, that they always gave to me night in and night out through hard fought games. I mean, you know, this, <laughs> the fans, the actual fans that's out there that actually, you know, gave their hearts to the team. They know who they are. I mean, thank you for all the things that they did for the team. As Daniel Gafford moves on towards the draft, he shows us just what it takes to be a prize NBA prospect. He said his goodbye to Razorback fans, and now Daniel Gafford is on to the NBA draft. The former Arkansas star gives a first-hand look at just what it takes to be a prize prospect. And he tells us why he believes his stock is trending in the right direction as we continue on Daniel's journey from El Dorado to the draft. While sun-soaked days drift away, <coughs> Daniel Gafford continues to work. <coughs> When I see you walking on the beach, you look so fine. As you wander, I wonder, will you be mine? There are no short days for Gafford here. There are workouts to do, yoga to practice, oh, man. drills to master. Oh, full, full extension. Film to study. Yeah. He's shooting jump shots. Yeah, he can actually get up and like, you know, knock it down too. Basketball to play. And that's just on Mondays. The dream of playing in the NBA is free, 
The grind? Well, that comes at a cost. And having to go day in, day out, every day, six days a week, and having only one off day, I mean, it's tough on some people's mental process. Three, four, you're good at this. Hard work is the price of a professional career. One Gafford is more than willing to pay. I had to think back on who I was doing this for and what I was doing it for. In fact, it was my family. I mean, it was time for them to get the life that they wanted. And I, you know, I can make that happen. For NBA scouts, it's no secret where Gafford's strengths lie. You describe most as a rim runner. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you? A rim runner, running the floor, end to end, first playing defense and getting back on offense to either score or help your team score. Is that the kind of player that you want to be and want to be known as? Yeah, I want to be defense first and offense last because, you know, that's how I've been playing all my life. Just, you know, protecting home, then going and making home better. <laughs> the question remains, can he shoot? With like my jump shot and stuff like that, you know, I've wanted that to be, you know, at its peak for the longest. So working with these guys, they put me with guys that it actually has, has actually helped me, you know, perfect my shot and become better at it. It's a skill he didn't showcase in Fayetteville. But one he's eager to prove he possesses. I mean, it was at times to where I could have took a wide open jump shot. You know, sometimes the confidence wasn't there. I thought I was going to miss, you know. That's a jump shot. The style of play in today's NBA favors big men who can stretch the floor. In Synergy Film Sessions, Gafford studies the type of player he might become. I like Blake Griffin's game a lot because he's developed from, you know, to being a back-to-the-basket player to an all-around player. You know, he can handle the ball now, he can shoot, you know, he can basically do it all now. His sophomore season saw him slide down the draft board, but Gafford's not concerned. My numbers did most of the talking for me. When it came to um, dealing with the fact that I was, you know, somewhat dropping in the draft, I mean, because, you know, I feel like I'm, you know, one of the best bigs in the draft, to be honest, you know, if we being real here. I'm pretty sure my draft stock is going to go up sooner or later, but until then, we just got to keep working. Gafford's agent told me that Daniel has been invited to the lottery draft in Chicago on May 14th, an invitation typically extended to players who are believed to be selected as a lottery pick, which could be an indication of just how high Gafford could go. Though his career in Fayetteville has come to a close, we will continue to follow Daniel's journey from El Dorado to Miami and ultimately to the NBA. <laughs> But when Daniel Gafford's time came, they didn't matter. <laughs> it was nothing but joy. You know, you can feel, I felt it go all the way through my body, man. I just, I couldn't hold it in. I had to let it go. Because, you know, I've came a long way with this, with this basketball thing. You know, there's been ups and downs. There's been all kind of stuff going on when it comes to basketball. And to finally hear my name called on that screen, it was just a whole different feeling. Initially planning on attending the draft in Brooklyn, Gafford decided to watch in Arkansas for one specific reason. I decided to come here because my mom was in Little Rock. I wanted her to see me. I wanted my dad to see it as well. Because, I mean, they were those two, they were both, you know, a big, um, they both took a big part on my decision and whatnot. And I wanted them to see where that decision was going to take me. Although the next step in his journey is taking him to Chicago, Gafford will never forget where he came from. And I'm pretty sure, you know, the city of El Dorado is going crazy right now because they finally got to see my name called. They finally got to see, you know, somebody finally make it out. You know, just, you know, being one of the first guys to actually do something like this with basketball down there, I mean, you know, I'm honored. I'm grateful for it.